incredible intro. Hey, everybody, it's me, uh, Man Alone. Nice to see you. Um, okay, I, I'm trying to um, uh, sit a little further. I'm actually trying to stand a little further away from my uh, play area, so to speak, because last time I was futzing so much with the microphone um, that it was very noticeable. I also hope the sound is better. It's a little quiet, uh, but there is a chance that... Um, it's too loud now, and if that's the case, I'm just I'm just gonna upload it, um, and I'll just watch the subscriber count fall. Um, we are going. Oh yeah, I have carpal tunnel, and I made this brace out of um, I don't know what this is, and then this is an Apple pencil uh, that um, I don't have an iPad anymore. I sold it on eBay, um, and. Uh, I forgot to clear it too. So there's somebody out there who is just has everything. But anyways, I'm sure nothing will come of that. We're going to talk about a very important topic today, which is how to start solo RPGing. I frequent the solo RPG forums on Reddit. And if any of you do as well, uh, you probably see the same topics over and over again, um, which I would say the most popular one is hey, I just started solo RPGing, what do you suggest? And then the top comment will just be Iron Iron Sworn or Starforge, which is a good comment. I just wish that they pinned that post um, because it gets asked a lot. And the second question, well, maybe not a question. The second one is like, I don't get it, which it's like, fine. You know, what's so interesting about that is like, just imagine all the forums that all like all of you could go on and just daily, just like... um. Uh, r slash uh, people who stare at pies and just be like, I don't get it. I don't like staring at pies. I prefer to eat them. Uh, no one does that. But you come to solo RPG forums, you're going to see uh, several thousand posts that say, hey, I tried it. I don't get it. Okay. It's just journaling. And it's like, fine, move on. Move on, please. Um, and then the third uh, is, I. how do you do this? Right? Like, I can't motivate myself. I see this in the comments a lot. And this one I actually get. And... Um, I've had a, a tough week. And so in fact, uh, um, I was about to say something that would be very grim, which is like, uh, like most men, when I get stressed, I cheated on you, <laughs> which I hope that's not true. Uh, I cheated on you because I played a solo RPG by myself. I played a few games of Colossal and I said, gee, I hope all my followers don't find out about this. Um, you know, and then the whole thing after I finished, I said, this was just a one-time thing, you know, don't think it'll happen again. Uh, but the truth is, it is something that uh, a lot of people, see, that's the other thing I'm trying to avoid too, is this smashing, which shakes the camera. I'm learning. Every day I'm learning. This is my 30-second video. I'm, <laughs> I'm learning. Um, yeah, so I, I totally get that um, in, in a sense, because there are a lot of activities like that, but there must be... Um, a different mental approach that I have to it because I do not see it as something that I like have to um, like set aside time for and commit myself to. I actually see it as something that I enjoy. And so I'll often be doing other things wishing that I could be solo RPGing. This is not me saying, man, I'm built different. You know, I don't know. Figure it out. You got something wrong with you. It, that's not the case at all. Um, but I did want to reverse engineer that and, and, and think about what, what is it that, um, helps me, what has helped me and what are, I think are some good advices, um, uh, as, as my girlfriend would say, advices and maths, uh, to, uh, it's British, uh, to help with this. And so <clears throat> I compiled a little list here. I think I came up with 10 if I counted correctly, we're going to get into that. Uh, beforehand, this uh, probably not something to do a whole video on, but I just wanted to share it. I got this nice pizza pie. Uh, no, I, I ordered, um, I saw this recommended. I can't remember who's on Reddit in a, or another video, but somebody was saying that they wanted some more Dragon Bane cutouts and they're asking, is there any besides the bestiary? And this was recommended. And I think this is only $12 on Amazon. Um, 
And I'm very frustrated about this because I'm trying, still trying to send something to Sweden. You know who you are, Seb. I'm so sorry. Uh, but I did find these. It's, uh, I just thought I would show you these really quick. Uh, these are really nice. They're not quite as thick as the Dragon Bane ones, but they're definitely not paper thin. Okay, They do have a... Um, you know, they're actually... Uh, the, the, the stock is quite good. And they have a front and back of both sides of this. And I think they're uh, pretty well made. And again, they're only like $12. I'll pull one of these out. And they're not um, perfectly Dragon Bane art, but they're pretty damn close. I mean, that's pretty good. Uh, this is definitely, uh, uh, I think they're good in their own right. Um, and not even like poor copies of something else. I think they're good in their own right. And so I did want to share, uh, I got a card with this artist. Maybe I'll hold that up so that you could scan that. Is that like a friendly thing to do is this like a gen z thing where you walk up to people and you just do that you say here scan scan my barcode um this is eugene k and uh instagram is stramos lab st uh, just look at it i don't know scan or whatever stramos lab yeah um so yeah i thought that was nice nice little uh set there and uh Nice, uh, got some inspiration tokens, spiders, some mages, uh, looks like a rogue, a warrior, uh, what, like a huntsman, or that's a that's a big boy. Um, yeah, so pretty cool, some enemies, some doors, treasure chests, some barrels, they have back. The only thing that is kind of weird, and I thought this, like, I, I understand now that they're inspiration tokens, but initially I looked at it upside down, and the back side of the inspiration tokens just say the name of the wanderers emporium and there's quite a few of those and i was like gosh that's weird to make six of the tokens just ads but they're actually just inspiration tokens right there so uh yeah check those out and okay so uh i yeah i i uh i just to give people an update and so we'll have to have another kind commenter that says like hey this once again, whatever he's trying to do in this video, it starts at like 521. Um, but I have been, I'm pretty excited because I have been working. Uh, I finished my Pocket Quest 2024 submission. Thank you, um, those that um, are watching this that were able to contribute to that. I did not uh, put that out as, as widely, but if I haven't gotten back to you, that's what I've been working on. And um also, I started working on a new Dragon Bane solo supplement that I'm pretty excited about. Uh, I hope to show it soon, and I'd actually like to play through it soon because I've introduced some new locations in it. I've introduced a new threat clock system, and I'm also introducing a companion mechanic uh, so that you can kind of have two people at once. And what I'm doing with it is um, alternating the heroic ability so that when you're on your own, you get army of one. And then when you're with a companion, you get soul survivor. So I'm just trying to figure out uh, the best way to do that. But it is, it is, oh boy, what happened? Okay. It is very liberating to um, have a system that you're just kind of making a supplement for because uh, yeah, what I've definitely discovered is, is the, uh, the, the, luck odds chance math maths part of this is pretty tough um so yeah i i will um show you more about that as i continue working on it but i that is my current fixation fascination obsession can't go to sleep because i keep working on it thing okay how to start solo rpging all right so these are 10 i'm just gonna go through them and I think I'll lift them up a little with my little phone thing here so we just get a better view. Okay, so um, number one. Ooh, I didn't. Figure out if you actually want to. <laughs> uh, do you actually want to solo RPG? Uh, and this is not necessarily that a binary answer to this. So it's not necessarily like either you want to or you don't. And if you don't get out of my face, um, I see a lot of people having some like a uh, pile of shame solo RPGs like I have with uh, my Warhammer minis, like, a, you know, these, this pile of stuff that I just have not got around to painting. And it really shouldn't be like that. Um, there, the, there is a, a collecting 
component of this. And some people love to collect these. They're always browsing. They're always looking for ones that get them. They page through them. They read them. They enjoy them. And then they don't get around to playing them and they feel as though they've failed, like they haven't um, they haven't done the right thing or whatever. And and I just want to say that's just not the case, okay? And so um, I think that, in in fact, Warhammer is, is kind of a good cognate for this because some people um, play Warhammer to play the tabletop game. Some people just like to paint. Some people don't paint or do tabletop at all. They just like the lore. That's pretty much how I was for like the first year with Warhammer. I just like the lore. I just like the books and reading and watching videos on it. And I think solo RPGs could be the same thing. You could just kind of like reading through them, like imagining them, use different things for your own creative processes, play little parts of them. Uh, there was like a very interesting uh, video that I saw recently that I can't find. If anyone knows what I'm referring to, please link this. Uh, it was just that RPGs are really a set of mini games. Like any RPG is this collection of mini games sort of spun together, um, uh, sewed together with a narrative. And I thought that was really interesting. And so figure out if you want to do this or like many things in life, figure out if you want to solo RPG or if you just want to be the type of person who wants to do this. And if that's the case and you're not that type of person, that's okay. That's okay. All right. You come in this at any place that you want and enjoy it any place that you want. When you figure out if you want to, figure out why you want to, okay? Because there are lots of different reasons to do this and lots of things to get out of it. I would suspect that um, some people might be surprised at the reason that I sell RPG. And I, I, I imagine that it's different than other people, okay? So some people do it because they love tabletop RPGs. And when they're not playing with a group, they play with themselves. Oof, sorry. <laughs> they play by themselves and, uh, <laughs> and they want to um, maybe create ideas if they're game masters. I know that comes up for me sometimes. Um, they want to... Um, let's see, some people want to use it as a way to just have like some time by themselves. Some people want to use it as creative writing. Some people want to, um, use it as a way to journal. Uh, and some people just don't like playing with other people. And that's, that's great. So if you could, if you could find out the, the answer to this question, you can start getting a better idea of what type of games to get. Okay. Because, I do, you know, I am guilty of having a lot of games that I really, because I love solo RPGs, and if you're a collector of these like me, you know that, like, you get pretty excited when you go into a game store and you see a solo, specific solo game, where you're like, well, I have to buy it. There are so few of these that I have to buy it. But after you buy up, like, all the big ones, and you start making choices about the other ones you want, you'll start to realize that there are some that you really don't, you're not interested in them. Um, because that's just what you, you don't want to get that out of them. I mean, uh, four against darkness, I think is a great example of one that I just think is really cool. I do like to play it occasionally, but it's not really what I'm interested in because it's too, uh, OSR it's too mathematical. It's too, uh, predetermined the way I just described that might be completely different than the way that you would describe four against darkness. I don't care. Uh, that's just how I see it. That's my reaction to it. And luckily, uh, when you're solo playing, you don't have to argue, um, the reason why I solo play, and I do not expect this to be massively adopted, but I thought I'd share it. Um, one of the most important books that I've ever read is The Red Book by Jung, Liber Novus. I actually was lucky enough, I found a very old copy of it in a library, and uh, it's huge. I wish I still had it. It's gigantic. Um, and it's it's Jung's sort of, uh, I think, five-year-long exploration of his subconscious mind Lots of pictures, lots of imagery, lots of symbols, and a big thing of uh, what Jung based his development of sort of archetypal approach to psychology, the shadow, um, and it was very important to me. And one of the things that Jung would do is active imagination. And active imagination is something that um, in some ways was kind of like a conceptualization of mindfulness in a time in the West before mindfulness was really a thing that you see on the front of magazines as you're checking out in Whole Foods. 
Um, and in some ways, this was like a way to make it palatable to a Western audience at that time, because I think if, you know, when, when Jung was writing, if you would have said like, oh, this is like a form of meditation, people would have been like, oh, navel gazing. I, I've heard that people uh, uh, in the great lands to the east do that. And it's like, uh, OK. Um, but now, you know, it's so ubiquitous. But I also want to say it's not to be confused with mindfulness purely because although it has like the Venn diagram has overlap, I think there is a, um, a, a separation of it in which this active imagination has this imagery in which you are guiding yourself through guided imagery. And one of the techniques uh, participating in active imagination is allowing your mind to to um to produce these images and we don't you know there's no editing of that it's like um whatever i see is is what i see and and there's not there's less of a process of saying oh i shouldn't be seeing that i should be seeing something more important i'm i'm seeing a bowl of chex mix that's ridiculous like move that aside i need to see some archetypes i need to see a raven uh, delivering a sword to uh you know a, uh, a a tree nymph or something, and that and then I'll figure out what that what that means about my relationship with my father. But no, no, no. The Chex mix is what your mind brought you. Okay, so so think about that Chex mix, right? And I honestly feel like uh, solo RPGing is a form of active imagination and journaling. And and people say oh, I don't really like journaling games. That's fine. But I can't get myself to journal any other way than this. Uh, and so for me, it is an activity of uh, uh, internal clearance. It is figuring out what is in me. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that because I think we're going to get back to that in a future one. Okay, yeah. So you got to put your bullshit away. Um, and this is both literal and, and figurative. If you want to solo RPG, you can't, um, you can't do all the other things you want to do. And if you're anything like me, it is so hard now to do anything without your phone or your laptop. Um, or if you are among those who didn't sell their non erased iPad on eBay, then your iPad or Kindle or whatever it is, you, you have to put those away because those are actually the things that are like trying to steal this special moment from you. They're trying to steal this, um, this, this space, this time that you've carved out for yourself. And you already know what you get from those. You already know what you get from your phone. You already know what you're going to get from Facebook and Reddit and all that stuff. Um, now, I have not been on social media other than, I guess, YouTube um, for so long. Uh, and I, I actually created a, a Twitter for this channel, and I just cannot even stand to... to quickly steal away onto there to post anything because it's so poisonous on there. Um, but the reason I didn't do that is because I finally reached the moment where I was like, I will never get anything on here that I want. And and the small things, the excuses that I would say of like, oh yeah, I got to know when you know concerts are. No, I don't. Okay. And, and so what I learned is when I put those away, and this is not intended to be a soapbox about social media, like do what you want, but um, what I learned in that is that all of these, all this bullshit is trying to pull you away from you. And when you solo RPG, that's an investment in yourself. And so of course you're going to, your, your, your mind is going to start, um, thinking of all of these things that you have to be doing, but you've been doing them all day, all week, put them away, put your bullshit away, have some respect for yourself and do something that you want to do. Or if you don't want to do it, don't do it. Okay. Sorry to be harsh. Okay. Find accessories that are special or find or make a place for it that is special. So in previous videos, I've shown people I have uh, my Lockbee kit here that I really love with my field notes. I have the special pen. I have different um, hex crawl maps that I like to use. I have my cards. I have my different dice, these like little wooden dice that I really love, um, the feel of those. And... Um, I say this is the area that I do this. Um, and in fact, one of the reasons why is I sometimes will make videos and I'll say, wow, I didn't um, solo uh, to the, the level of, of, you know, expansiveness or creativity that I normally do. And I realized it was kind of 
I really love the space that I do it in. I just can't film there because it's right by a street. And so they'll just like ambulances every five seconds. But um, you need to carve out a little space for yourself. It doesn't have to be this shenanigans. Uh, don't be fooled by this. This isn't this isn't the space that that I would normally use. Um, but make sure it's special and invest in your in it a little bit. Get some things that you like. Get some things that are going to feel nice to pull out. And if you're a bro, I know that you try to pretend maybe that you don't like stuff like, oh, you're, you're, I just don't, I, you, you can't see yourself being like, I just love my little lock bee. You know, I just, this is so cool. Shut up. You love stuff. Don't, don't, don't do, don't try to pull this with me. You love stuff. I just got a pair of shoes the other day and I looked down at them three times and I was like, I love those shoes. It's okay. We love stuff. Get some stuff that you love that you're going to look forward. Find the shoes that you're going to look forward to looking down at. Uh, one of my favorite things when I'm soloing is when I have any circumstance when I can like flip my uh, D2 Morkborg die, right? I'm just like, oh, that's a D2. That must mean I get to flip my D2. Uh, so find some stuff that's special. Create a little place for yourself, okay? Uh, that said, not that said. That's a weird transition. I'm going to have a that said soon. Also, figure out what's going to actually be fun for you. Um do not, okay, there's going to be, if you just start this hobby, there's going to be some things that you don't know whether you think they're fun. Um, there's going to be some things that you think suck, and then you're going to try them, and you're going to be like, I actually kind of love that. And of course, there's going to be some things that you say, oh, my favorite part is definitely going to be this. And then you do it, and you're like, I hated that. And that's okay. Find out what's actually fun for you. Are you like a min-maxer? Do that. Are you a person who likes to skip forward in time? Do that. Do you like to sketch? Do that. Do you like to use your Game Boy and travel around, you know, um, uh, Divinity Original Sin 2 to sort of populate the different places you go to? Fine. Whatever is good for you, do that. And then figure out what is the moments that cause joy for you. Um, insert a, just in case I violated Marie Kondo copyright there. Oh, no, that's, that's spark joy. Okay, yeah, this is what's going to explode joy for you. That's my one. That's my tip. What is going to, like, nuclear strike joy for you? And then just do that and do that as, as often as you can. Of course, adding different diversity. Are you someone that loves to see the roll of the dice? Great. You love to journal, sketch. You like using cards. Uh, do you like moments where you can create your own monsters? Do you like it when you're overwhelmed by attacks and you got to work your way out? Play in a way that it appeals to the the, the moments that um, cataclysmically explode joy for you. My book's coming soon. Uh, okay, stop letting your internal critic fill in for the audience that isn't there. Um. I do hear this one a lot and it almost I have to say it almost breaks my heart because some of us have such strong internal critics uh, voices in our head that say like that what we're doing is not good enough what we're doing is not fun enough it's you know I'm not doing it right I'm not doing it well those voices are so strong in some of us present company not excluded I really had to do work do the work in my life to get to get through this and it still comes up sometimes um, that critic can be so strong that even when you're by yourself, you still feel like you're in front of the audience, an audience. But it's it's just that critic. It, they're sitting there shouting from row six, being a total asshole, being like, yeah, that sucked. Next. You can't let the critic into that space, okay? So one of the reasons why I said it's good to establish that space is because you need a space that's going to have a force field uh, against that critic. Um Whatever happens during that session, if you have a high level of investment, you did it, okay? So sometimes people say, oh, you know what? I set up everything and I started reading the rules and all of a sudden I got super curious. I was playing Lancer and uh, I was like, wow, this is really interesting and I want to read the lore a little bit. And all of a sudden you look at the clock and you're like, ah, it's 10.45 p.m. I don't have any time to play anymore. Yeah, that's that's great. You had a nice session and uh, cool. That's what you did. Um, is if the investment was there, if the desire to um, be playful and let new ideas pop up in your head is there, uh, you did great. All right. We don't need this internal critic to be there ruining this too. 
All right. This should be a place that that they can't get in. Uh, I talked about active imagination and, and one of the things that's so hard in, in well, in when you first start is that process that we can now probably call the internal critic um, in which the things that come up for us, we say, oh, no, 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 get that out of the way. That's all that's all garbage. I can't be thinking of that right now. I got to be thinking of something better and more epic and more interesting and more coherent and more based on the great works of the Western canon. No, you don't. Your mind is trying to tell you something. The things that are coming up are trying to tell you something, right? And so if I said right now, think of like an awesome weapon and your brain was like, got it. My weapon is a pail of water, okay, and um, a rope that is tied around the top of it. And uh, yeah, that's my cool weapon. And I would be like, uh wait a minute, that's not a good enough weapon. I should make something called like uh, the terror at dawn. And it's a double hammer that when you hit someone with it, their grandmother also dies. No, your brain, my brain just now gave me this rope in this bucket. Okay. And if I were to be playful with this and I were to trust this instinct, okay, maybe my weapon is not going to be this rope in the bucket. Although you know right now that Jackie Chan could literally level 10 people with a rope bucket weapon. But maybe it's not. Maybe this has got something with poison in it. Maybe this is something that you're using. Uh, maybe you're using, you're lowering yourself in a well for a hiding place. Uh, maybe you find something at the bottom of that bucket that everybody, every other person has been ignoring, a weapon that's really great. Uh, maybe this is some sort of task that a wise person has given you and Miyagi style, you're going to have to use this bucket and this rope and you're going to have to figure out how to escape from a room or clean his 1957 Chevy with it until you learn how to do the praying mantis kick. Whatever it is, that's what your mind gave you. And check, that's correct. Your mind gave you the correct thing. Stop resisting this. This is correct. This is right. And I'll tell you right now, if you go, no, 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 that's silly and you let that internal critic win and you go, no, 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 instead my guy has a, a dagger. Everyone in that like imaginary crowd is like, boo, refund, just a dagger. I've had so many daggers, please, something new. We could have had the bucket. Hey, it's on you. I'm not the one that broke all those people's hearts. All right, so Figure out what your mind's trying to tell you. Your mind has a great idea that it just came up with. And think about how sad you've made your brain when you're like, no, that idea is stupid. Let's use somebody. Let's use an idea that somebody else came up with. No, trust. Trust your ideas. At, okay. At the same time, get good. Okay. This is something that's a little tough. It's a little tough because you definitely don't want to hear this kind of thing. Um, because you know the most annoying person in your life says this kind of stuff. Um, I still remember when I just started playing one of my favorite roguelikes of all time, Dead Cells, and I was just like, man, I just cannot get the timing down uh, with a shield. With the shield, like I'm not able to do parries, I can't do it consistently. And I asked my friend who was um, a big sort of uh, Elden Ring and uh, what's the other one, Dark Souls, Somebody who is just like, you watch them play and you're like, how in the world can someone be this good at a video game when they're laying like that on a couch? And there is like, the controller was like on his stomach and he's just like sideways. And he's just like, yeah, you just got to get good. And I'm like, oh, no, I don't feel like getting good at that. I should be getting good at something like chemistry or water aerobics. No, I don't mean that like if you're no if you're not uh, able to come up with like a great uh, creative thing, the first session that you play. Correct. That was the first session that you played. And I do notice a lot of Reddit posts will be right after a person plays their first session of solo RPG and they're like, oh, yeah, I don't get it. Uh, in my opinion, kind of dumb. And I would love to like um, if, you know. 
we all think about in the afterlife that they're like, you can find out anything. Ask us any mystery about the universe. Want to know how the dinosaurs died? And I want to say, no, actually, I want to know how many people made those shitty posts on solo subreddits and other message boards about that they played it and they hated it. How many of those people uh, didn't have a, a very successful outing or were sort of uh, disappointed in themselves? A hundred percent. And I go, thank you. And by the way, which afterlife is this? And they say, it's not heaven. And I say, oh, and I look at the camera and I go, well, hopefully it's purgatory. I think I have about 90 years in purgatory, which is not bad. Uh, okay. So yeah, um, work on it. You're, you're going to get better at this. You're going to, um, you're going to get better at trusting your ideas. You're going to get better at combining disparate things and creating something new and interesting. Uh, you're going to get better at sort of like rolling with the punches, incorporating the mechanics in real time. The play is going to start feeling like it's going more smoothly. And that's great. That's, that's also part of the appeal of it for me is that one of the things your lizard brain loves is improving your ability to do something. It doesn't care what it is. It could be, um, you could be improving your ability to solve the ozone layer, or you can be improving your ability to play disc golf. And either way, your lizard's brain, your lizard brain is going to say, good job. You're good. You're good. You did good. You're better at something now. So just improve, seek improvement. That's a feature, not a bug. Stop fixating on how a solo RPG falls short of your expectations. Yeah, so this is one that I see a lot, uh, and I guess I combine this a little bit with the last one. But again, I think that um, there is a, another piece to this where people will complain about a solo RPG and say, you know what, I played um, Star Forge, and it is uh, just like a masterpiece, and I can't believe how good it is. But I just like don't love the combat system, and so uh, I'm going to put this one back on the shelf. And it's like, okay what don't you like about the com combat system? And also, what do you think is going to happen if you use a different combat system or you deal with it a different way? Just change it. Like, you don't you don't have to throw uh, an entire system out because you don't like one part of it. You just do what you want. Man, if you want to narrate the whole combat and not roll any dice, go ahead. Uh, if that sounds like the worst thing to you ever, then don't do that. Create a different kind of system or use a different solo game to navigate combat, whatever it is. I, I think that this is a form, you know, if we outright reject the critic, if we say to the critic, you're not welcome here. And I'm sorry, every time I say this, is anyone else thinking of um, John Lovitz uh, from the critic? Or is that a generational thing? You tell that critic, they can't be here. The critic will like then put on like a Groucho Marx mask and try to pretend like other their other things. And so then they'll come back and and now they're not the critic. They're like the optimizer person. And they're like, oh, you know what? This game uh, really falls short on these different uh, components. And they really could have done this better. And because they could have done it better, dot, dot, dot. I only deserve you only deserve the best. <laughs> Like, I don't know. I don't think we, we even go past that dot, dot, dot sometimes. But uh, I do hear people saying this. You know, I just I'm just really disappointed in how this they do. Uh, they don't allow the, the vehicles in this are just not well set up. And it's like if you have the taste and the wherewithal to appraise the implementation of vehicles in a solo RPG, you also have the ability to create your own mechanics for that. Okay. Okay. Let's go to number 10. Take some time to think about how you will make your progress meaningful. Um, the funny thing about solo RPGs is it is one of the most social types of role playing in between sessions. Um, when I'm playing my, uh, like campaigns with others, I definitely am talking about it when I'm in it. I might say great game, everyone afterwards. I don't really talk about it between sessions, um, unless there's some sort of trope that comes up over and over again with your friends or whatever. With solo games, people have come up with so many different ways to create reports on it. And the funniest thing is I used to be, I used to think that like when people would write like, um, 
action reports and stuff that they were just like throwing those into the, uh, the void. And then all of a sudden I started reading them and then I found out so many people read these. So figure out how you're going to honor your play. Hey, it could be like a video like this. This works for me. For some of you, you would, you, you know, you'd rather have like a, a reads stuck under your fingernails, but like for, for some people, this works a video for some people you maybe want uh, to write out a, a post action report for some of you. Maybe you want to make a sketch of your session for some of you. You might not want to share it at all, but you want some way to memorialize it. Maybe two sentences that describe that day, or you want a really good way of categorizing it. Do you think that people keep all their journals of their life because they want to sit down and read them end to end? Maybe, but that's probably, I think most people that have impressive collections of those things, it is a monument to their possibilities, to their industriousness, to their, th this, these things from their mind that they plumbed out like gold nuggets and put to paper and are preserved. And who knows who can find these and who knows what these will mean to something. But for me right now, I'm looking at that and I feel so proud of it. So Maybe that's the way that's going to connect with you. You need to find out what is the right way for you. Um, in my living room, I have the ratings for every Studio Ghibli movie that I watch taped onto a lamp. And I can't tell you how much joy I have walking by that. And it's ridiculous. They're on post-it or they're on note cards just like this. And they'll just say like Princess Mononoke... 4.5 out of 5. This is going to be controversial. My favorite, like obviously Mononoke, Spirited Away, amazing. My favorite Ghibli movie right now is Ponyo. I have, I don't think I've ever loved a movie as much as that. It is so cute. I, I, I can't even believe I just said that, but it's just when she's like, ham. Oh, I really hope the volume is not too loud because it was really hard for you all to hear ham if you're wearing headphones. But yeah, take some time to think about how you can how you can share it or if you don't want to share it, how you can memorialize it or if you don't want to memorialize it, how you can close that chapter and have some sense of accomplishment, some record of your progress, something that can be just for you or maybe for no one. Hell, go ahead and take when you're done and throw it into a fire. Just make sure it's in a safe place. And that's what this video has all been about, folks. Safe fire hygiene. <laughs> Is that the right way? Is there a fire? Yeah, Can't, campfire, like Smokey the Bear. It's never too late to add uh, a PSA at the end of your video. So I just want to say, uh, you know, forest fires, that's not good. And you actually get fined for it. I learned that. Not the hard way. I read it. Uh, yeah, this is, I'm wasting your time. Okay. Uh, thanks everyone. Bye.